Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I decided that my video for today I will give a tutorial on how to use this really cool corruptor right here, Vine Saw Strong Corruptor. If anyone else knows any other great corruptors out there besides the real time corruptor, please tell me. I've been looking for a decent corrupting engine and corruptor that would get me some good results. Like I was going to do a video on New Super Mario Brothers today. But, you know, that didn't really work out. So, you know, today I'm going to be explaining how to use this. Alright, so first thing you want to do is just read this ROM directory. This is where your ROM files, or the game files, where you download from online, should be located at. So, just for example, um, mine is somewhere in here. You did, wherever you store your game files let me see if I can find this real quick Super Mario 64 alright so I made that video yesterday Super Mario 64 and I honestly loved it and you know it took me forever to record but still it was really great and hold on yes it should be all right. So you won't you don't click the fold. You click the folder it's at. You will not see it. You will not see it in, under these, such as desktop or documents or wherever you store it. You need to click those like this, desktop, and then boom. Then you should just be right here, Super Mario 64. It's right there, and now. This is where you want to save. What the really cool thing about this is that it doesn't overwrite your saves, does not overwrite your files, but in order to work, you need to have a preset to where you want it to save. So just save it anywhere. Um, stop. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. I'm not really organized. Whatever. Um, I'm just gonna name this Brom. Corrupted saves. There we go. I'm gonna open it and we'll click save. Now you gotta reselect your ROM because for some reason that just messes it up. And you got now you gotta choose your emulator. Your emulator, an emulator, what it is essentially is what basically will run the ROM file. Like for example, you wouldn't be running a 8-bit game on Windows 32-bit system you will be running it on a certain emulator that has the ability to recognize you know the 8-bit file the 8-bit game Mario and run it now for me I'm going to be using the N64 you got to whatever use whatever you have accordingly documents Okay, it's me here somewhere. Release. There we go. Open. So now I have my emulator selected. And for games like Super Mario 64, it's very hard to corrupt. And it's just very buggy whenever it comes to. Well, it's not buggy, it's just super weak corruptions. And you have to be very specific. Auto end. See, if you do things like this. It just won't work. It's probably, I'm assuming it's because of the emulator. It's not programmed to run corrupted files. It's probably programmed to detect corrupted files and not run them in fear of damaging the emulator. All right, let's run this bad boy. Oh. And then for some of these emulators, you have to select the file before playing it. It's me, Mario! Later, later today, I'm going to be recording Hello. another episode of Mario. But for now, I'm you know, trying not to go off on a tangent here. See? Alright, so for these other options, I didn't even get close to explaining what you could do here. The start by, I gotta explain everything. You gotta enable this first if you wanna do a byte corruption. A byte corruption, a byte is a singular unit. It can be defined as a singular unit 
of data in a game, a program, or software. See this right here, this start byte? That's where the corruption will begin. If it's at zero, that means it starts at the very beginning. If it's at 100, it starts at the 100th byte. If it's at 1,000, it starts at the 1,000th byte. The end byte, you could just do auto end for this, but that's where the that's the end of the, the the written program. That's how many bytes are in it. I know it has seven f f f f f f. That's just something I really did. Now this increment is how often you want a corruption to occur. Like if you have it set on a thousand, it will corrupt. That's it will corrupt every one thousand. It will stop. It'd be a thousand. Corrupt. It'd be a thousand. Like scanned bytes, one corruption. More another thousand scanned bytes corruption. And see this right here, this corrupt every. That's pretty self-explanatory. It corrupts every so often. How how more often you want it? The lower, the more likely it is to not even the game not even start up. If you're doing a very very high quality game, you want to have the corrupt every byte very low. This th don't need to worry about that. Um, that's just a symbol there. See, like if I ran Mario at one byte, let's see, see, it's in. Wait, oh, I didn't have it at zero. Now I'm gonna do this. It's me, it's Mario. Because you gotta be very specific. You gotta be very instructive, but very specific at the same time. Now, let's see here. All right, so for these settings down here, the add byte is how how many how many digits you want to add to a byte. Like, you know, it's simple addition. Like so, like. Add one. You add one extra number. Like bits are written in numbers and letters. Now adding a a number to that would make like a one into a two, and a letter like a into b, and so on and so forth. You have to have. You can only select one for this software, or right, because it might get too glitchy. Now shift. This is like how like it's uh, again pretty pretty self explanatory. It will shift a certain amount of bytes to the right by how many bytes you want it. To like one byte, if you shift it right one byte, it will shift every single byte in the program and shift it one over to the right, which will really screw up the code. You probably don't want to mess with that. This is my favorite, replace, because it's not so game breaking and you still get some results and the game still kind of works. Like replace three with like every bit that's written in three replaced with a uh, nine that won't do anything but just replace a bit with another bit and remember these won't this will overwrite this will not overwrite the save it will create its own save for you to use later now i'm going to run it see you again it won't do anything it's me mario see there hello all right and now we move on to text. Again, there's not much to do here but replace words with other words. You do not want to remove Nintendo because for some reason it just screws the whole software up. Not the software but the game. And this is you this is like your corruption range. Go back and jump back to corruption. You start an invite. That's what it messes with there. Alright, now is color replacement. Again, self-explanatory. There's a palette here in case you need help identifying which colors are which. See like 0F is this is black right here. And then if you replace replace with the color, it will replace every single form of that color in the game that there is, like a like every form of the darkest solid black can be replaced with the, the solid blue right here. All right, now so that now this is some more stuff right here, and if you need help, there's a little there's little symbols hidden all over the place that can explain it for you. But I just decided that I was going to show you guys a tutorial on how to use this fantastic software. Thanks to the creators of it, 
I've been able to corrupt games accordingly. It's really fun. It's really awesome. I love it. You know, I don't, I don't know what I'd do without it. Honestly, it's just amazing. Alright, anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.